Welcome! Well, here we are in Mount Airy, North Carolina, and this is famous because this is where Andy Griffith from the Andy Griffith Show grew up, and he modeled this town, this actual town you see in the background, he modeled it, and it was the inspiration for the famous show, The Andy Griffith Show. So you can see there's a cute car behind me. I guess they do tours. And I'm just going to turn the camera around so you can see everything here. It's a really cute town. And over there you see Mayberry Market and Souvenirs. And I'm going to pan around here. And that is the Earl Theater. And when Andy Griffith he was famous in 1960 when the show started. I think the show ran from 1960 to 68. And he was famous because he did a, um, a movie called uh, Face in the Crowd. It was an Elia Kazan movie. And I think it was, a, it was a very serious movie, if I remember. And when that movie premiered, he actually came to the town, back to Mount Airy, and premiered it there at the Earl Theater. So that's that. That's the Earl Theater right there. So, and then when he went, obviously the show wasn't filmed here. It was filmed on a studio lot in, uh, I believe in, in Hollywood or West LA. It was, it was obviously in LA somewhere. And the opening shot where they're fishing, that was actually in Beverly Hills. So nothing was filmed here, but this was the inspiration for the show. So, we're here on a Saturday, it's around six o'clock, and everything is kind of uh, shut. But I believe if, oh, I forgot to take a, a photo or a, a look at this. I believe this is a tour that you can actually go around in <laughs> like the Barney, the Barney car and do a tour of the town. So we're gonna kind of, just walk around the town a little bit. There's lots of cute little, uh, there's lots of cute little soda fountains and different things. People come from all over to experience the uh, the town that inspired Mayberry. Oh, let me just get a shot of this old Coca-Cola sign, which I think is so cool because. Usually they're faded and that one is not. They must have retouched it. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go there tomorrow and look at antiques. Lots of antiques in Mount Airy. So even if you never watch the show, it's a really fun town to come to. It's like stepping back to the 1950s. going back this way, back to the town, chocolates in there, oh, look at this guy, <laughs> he looks, he looks happy, oh they're already getting ready for Halloween. Candies and memories. More antiques. This store looks cool. Rustic living. <laughs> We're gonna come down here. Oh, that looks cute. Let me look at this. Oh wow. Oh, right. oh, cool. right now, oh wow, look at this place, look at this, oh wow, individual pies, New York cream cake, moonshine coffee. Maybe I'll have that tomorrow. 
Red velvet cake. Oh, well, the prices are really cheap. So this is all fresh. Oh, wow, homemade pies. Look at this. Wow. Look at all the different all the different flavors. Oh, it's also ice cream. Look at this. Oh, coconut cake for 14. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Kitchen from here. She got the dough. Oh, wow. Let's look at them. Look at them. Wow. This is really fresh. Apple. Ooh. How are you? Hi. Just uh, taking a look at all your goodies. Look at that. That's Barney with Emmy Lou. <laughs> Sorry. Now, I believe Emmy Lou actually moved to the town. I forget the actress's name. But I believe she moved to the town after coming here for a few uh, for a few parades. Yeah. Andy Griffith with Floyd. Aunt B. Well, it's a nut house. You know that one? You're in the nut house? Oh, we're in the nut house. All right. <laughs> it's my kind of nut house. All right, we're going to continue on. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. They are geared up. I know. Wow. Look at that. Only three fifty. Beautiful. I think I'm gonna get a cranberry one in the morning. I'm gonna get uh I'm gonna definitely come back, yeah. Ooh, gluten free cones. This is a cute place. I guess we go back on my car and my seat. Ooh, look yep. at ice cream. Yep. Hi. Um, well, we're going to go and look at uh, where's Snappy's. We're in the dress shop. Yeah. I think we're going to have breakfast there tomorrow, right? Yeah, right. There's another horse race tomorrow. So this is a bank. Oh, more ice cream. Be careful. Boy, you get your fill of you get your fill of sweets in this town. Opie's candy store. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Now this is where we're gonna come tomorrow because this is a really old place and the inspiration for the lunch place in the show. Cool. Snappy lunch. Was it called Snappy's in the show? I don't know. I'm not sure. I know it's, it's, it's a lot of locals here. It's popular. Yeah. Four chop sandwiches. Four chop sandwiches. Just a fun place. That great coffee. Yeah, so we're going to go there, and they call this Floyd's Barber Shop, and it actually really is an old barber shop. Look at that. And I believe that this man here actually used to. Here. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Well, that's on the show. 
That is great. That is so beautiful. Might have been filmed right here, though. You'd have to look. That no, up. that was it. Was a set. That's a set. It was all a set. But look at so the original Floyd. Floyd number one, number two. I love it. So the original Floyd was actually a barber named, it looks like Russell, and I read that he used to cut Andy Griffith's hair for uh, a lot of years. And I don't know if the family still runs it, but um, this is the original Floyd. <laughs> this is cute. And I think, I don't think his name was Floyd, but um, he was the inspiration for Floyd. And I think Andy Griffith used to get his hair cut here, even um, after he became real famous and the show was obviously such a big hit. Okay, so here's Snappy's. And we're gonna come here. I love that picture of Otis. I actually have, I think his name is Harold Smith. I actually have his autograph. Otis. We named our cat after him. I loved, always loved his ties. Well, there's another nice shot of the, the show. So this is really neat because I'm going to look at the hours here. So it's just open for lunch and this was the inspiration for the lunch counter in, counter in the show. And I'm just going to, hopefully I can get some shots tomorrow, but if you look in there, it is a really old place. It looks like it's from the 40s or 50s. Joe's getting photos. Oh, he's trying to get out of the photos. Snuck one in there. Okay, so this is part of Snappy's, where you get your Snappy lunch or breakfast. So we're gonna check this out tomorrow. I just love it. It's a real town, but he uh, he worked it into the show and the and the set in Hollywood. But this is the real thing, the real Mayberry. Love it. One more shot of the. Andy and Barney. <laughs> I love it. And Amy Lou. So yeah, as, as I was saying earlier, I, I remember reading that Emmy Lou used to come here for parades. I'm going to cross the street, Joe. The, and I can't remember the actress's name who played Emmy Lou, his Andy's girlfriend, but I read that she used to come uh, once a year to Mount Airy for different uh, festivals. I think they have a parade here once a year. And later in life, I don't know how old she was, but later in life, she actually moved here. So isn't that great? The character of Emmy Lou actually ended up moving here. So this is a great antique store. We've been in here before. And, you know, even if you don't care about the show, um, uh, you know, it's a great town to visit because it is like stepping back in time. And maybe because of the show's notoriety, it's a huge place. I think it's two floors, but God, I can't believe they leased up outside. Look at that. I mean, Jesus, anywhere else people would steal them. But, um, and maybe because of the show's, look at all those beautiful antiques, because of the show's popularity, it preserved the town? I don't know. Maybe the town would have been preserved without the, the show. But um, either way, I'm just glad that you gotta, I'm gonna zone in on Marnie there. Either way, I'm just glad that Mount Airy, I don't think, has changed much. Since, since the 50s. 
just going to walk a little further down. So it's a mixture of different shops, toy store there, souvenirs. I think the last time I was here, oh, there she, there's a book uh, regarding uh, Thelma Lou, the actress. Betty Lynn, so that was her name, Betty Lynn. She's the one that ended up moving here. Oh, and that's the, I was mentioning, that's the, um, that's in Beverly Hills. I think it's actually in Bel Air uh, at a park. I went there once. So that's where the fishing, the beautiful uh, fishing uh, start of the show was. So, yeah, so you can come here and get all kinds of t-shirts and that's a cute one. I like that one. Aunt B. <laughs> Gotta love Aunt B. I read somewhere, and I don't know if this is true, that the actress that played Aunt B actually didn't get along with Andy Griffith, but I don't know. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> but I read it. So, well, they have ghost tours here too. Oh, this is cute. So this is a, uh, a bookstore. Pages, books, and coffee. All right. There's a few more antique stores down there. It's really a short area. Like down there where that brown building is kind of the end. So a few more shops, candle shops, gifts and souvenirs. I mean, I like coming here just to vintage shop. I don't necessarily just love every store has to have a photos from the show. You gotta love it. I love it. T-shirts. 63rd anniversary. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, the show started in 1960. And I believe it ended in 1968. Oh. This is more sweets here. Oh, Dairy Free, Prudence McCabe's Confectionaries. It's another cute, cute store. I just love this town. It's so. So quaint. It's a nice dress shop. T-shirt shop. So not everything is touristy. That's just a regular men's store. A sock outlet, a candle store. Yeah, and that's pretty much the end of it there. There's a few little side streets. That's a jewelry store. All right, I'm gonna join up with Joe and we're gonna have some dinner. Hello. Hi. 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 Really nice. Beautiful. Glad to get you this. It's beautiful. It's a 1931 Ford Model A. Wow. 1931? 31. Wow. I was just thinking that that building was eight years old when this car was made. Oh, wow. <laughs> eight years old. Wow. Isn't that something? <laughs> That's your car, I take it. Oh, yeah. Keep it beautiful. I'm sorry, it's a 1931? 31. Wow. That's the last year they made Model A Ports. After that, they went into the Model B, they came out with a V8 motor and all that stuff, and oh. everything started changing. Let's see if I got a signal. That'd be an interesting one. Oh, I got a signal. How much was $500 worth of 1931? I'm going to guess $30,000. Look at the year guess. salary, year and a quarter. Is that a year salary? Wow. So this would have been a quarter half, of a half your yearly salary. They made about 1000 a year? 1000 a year. 
Sorry? Nowadays, it'll take you a full salary to, yeah. you know, the average person a full salary almost to buy a car. They've gotten out of control. Yeah. And it, they don't look like this, and they don't last as long as this. No, no. They don't have as much uh, well, you know, metal grandpa, as this. Great grandpa had the car kind of deal, and, grand, and that guy would pass it on to his son, and so on and so on. And these the cars just never went away. They just put them in the barn, and somebody could bring them out every 20 years and restore them and yeah. keep them running. And, but, uh, my yeah. Neighbor has, my neighbor has a, like a yellow one that's kind of like this type of car. It always keeps it covered up. Oh, sure, yeah. But to me, the worst thing you can do is park these cars and not drive them. If you don't drive them, yeah. they, they deteriorate. Yeah. Yeah, my, so. my late brother had a couple old um, 40s, kind of, I don't know what they were, Where 40s cars. Yeah. And uh, he never drove them, and I always thought, this is kind of sad. Yeah, yeah. But, so where are you all from? Uh, from Florida. From Florida, Florida. yeah. No way. Uh, yeah. Hill country. <laughs> well, yeah. for it's Florida. a little hill. A little for, bit, for yeah. Florida. I've been sailing on the lake. Sorry? I've been sailing on Dora Lake. Oh, you have? Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, we live right around the corner from Dora Lake. Yeah. I used to go up there uh, on my motorcycle all the time and hang out on Main Street. And a lot of tourists would show up at Mount Dora because it reminded uh, them of New England. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, did you get tired of tourists coming like us? Oh, no, yeah. I love it. Oh, I'm actually here to make you smile. Thank you, sir. <laughs> See, he's smiling. Oh, yeah. Good work. Good. Your smile. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. And you can take a picture from the camera later. As well. Alright, this is the Andy Griffiths Playhouse and Art Center. Which is I don't know what kind of productions they put on, but this is obviously all to do with Andy Griffith. I don't know if he contributed to the museum when he was alive, or if this was what the community did. Oh, look at there, that's a really nice art center. So modern looking. Looks like they do outdoor productions. This is what I like. This beautiful little statue here. Reminiscent of the start of the show when they go fishing, which was filmed up in uh, Bel Air, Beverly Hills, at a park. And that's Opie, of course, Ron Howard, who had an amazing career, American Graffiti afterwards. And then obviously he became a filmmaker, Happy Days. And then, I love that. A simpler time, a sweeter place, a lesson, a laugh, a father and son. <laughs> Very cool. Love those statues. Lots of people coming to the museum and the playhouse. So neat how Andy Griffith never forgot his hometown. I believe he came here once a year when they had when they used to have a um, a parade through the town. All right, so that's the Andy Griffith Playhouse and Museum. Alright, so this is the home that Andy Griffith grew up in uh, with his parents. It says he lived here till 1966. I don't know if that could be true though because the show was on the air from 60, 1960 to 68 and that was filmed in Hollywood. So, But anyway, maybe his family still owned the house during that time. So this is the house he grew up in just going to pan back. Beautiful little cottage. And you can actually rent this. I don't know on what site, but you can rent the whole home. I bet they have vintage uh, furnishings inside. Look at that sweet little swing there. Just a nice little, it looks like a little two-bedroom 
home, I'm guessing. I, I uh, saw an interview with him where he said that their the bathroom or toilet was actually outside when he grew up. So it was very cold when he had to use the bathroom in the winter. So no, no inside bathroom when he was growing up, at least not an inside toilet. What a sweet house. Still a nice neighborhood. I love, I love that house over there. All right. Well, that might end our tour of Mount Airy, the real Mayberry, the inspiration for Mayberry. It's kind of part of the American dialogue. <laughs> that town is no Mayberry. <laughs> or that town's like Mayberry. It's everybody's uh, fantasy small town. All right, well, I think that wraps it up. I'm gonna get myself in the shot. And then, oh, I gotta trip. We're gonna say goodbye, or I'm gonna say goodbye for Mount Airy, Mount Airy, North Carolina. Everybody's favorite hometown. Until next time, be seeing ya.